Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am very excited for this video and I'm even more happy that I can get this video out before like the big MMA guru and the Lucas Traces get out their version of this because I almost guarantee we're going to see that because we got no MMA for the next four weeks. Views are going to be tight for the big guys. But this video is going to be the official tier list of every single numbered card of 2023. Everything from UFC 283 to UFC 296. I'm going to put them in a tier list. And we're going to see what is the best card of the year and what is the worst card of the year before the end of the video. But before we begin, please begin a like, subscribe, if you've already subscribed, please consider hitting the bell icon. It really helps me in the algorithm, and I'm trying to grow this to 2,000 before the end of the year. We're cutting it close, but we've already grown so far. I mean, like, beginning of December, we were at 400 subscribers. Now, I think we're at, like, 1,600, maybe 1,700 by the time that you're watching this video. Thank you, everybody who's joined so far. It means the absolute most to me. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Now, let me give you the criteria really quick, because... Some people are going to say, well, the card was bad, but the prelims were good. Like at UFC 296, the prelims were amazing. It was the actual card that we pay for that just wasn't it. So for the sake of simplicity, for myself and everybody who's watching, I'm only going to be going over the card that we pay for because at the end of the day, that's what your wallet's going to go to. And if that's a bad card, then it's just wasted money. Let's get started with UFC 283. Now, I'm going to be real with you. This is probably the most forgotten card of the entire year. And I think the main event is pretty underrated. Glover Teixeira versus Jamal Hill. This is the card that Jamal Hill won the title on. And to be fair, the, the main event's good. Like, the main event is a solid fight. The co-main is another figure right on Brandon Moreno fight. And um, we have Gilbert Burns versus Neil Magny. I'll be real with you. Probably the highlight of the card is the Gilbert Burns fight just because of like how dominant of a performance it was. And we can't forget about the Bonfim flying knee KO against Terrence McKinney. Best KO of the entire card. But again, that's on the prelims. Doesn't count. And I believe this is an underrated card. However, I am the criteria is... Do I regret spending $80 on this card? A little bit, I'm not going to lie. That's why this goes in D tier. This is a D tier card. It is not the worst card of the year by any means, but it's just painfully D tier. Next up is UFC 284. Let me pull up this card really quick. It is Islam Makachev versus Alexander Volkanovsky 1. Now, unpopular opinion, the main event carries this entire card it just does and that's the way that it's supposed to be but imagine that the main event of this card was islam makachev head kick KOing volkanovsky if that was the case this would not be a very remembered card but because of the main event and co-main event was Yair rodriguez versus emmett also a good performance that's a good main and co-main I think I'm going to have to say B tier on this one. I think B tier is a fair one. It's not the cream de la cream of this year. And we had some great cards this year. And any other year, this would be an A tier. But this year, just because of how good some of the cards have been, I have to put it in B tier. But you can justify like an A minus. Next up is going to be UFC 285. A tier. Let me read off who is on the main card, and remember how good some of these fights were. Main event, John Jones versus Cyril Gunn. Probably the best main event of the entire year in terms of just pure scope. Co-main event, Valentina Shevchenko versus Alexa Grasso. This was the Grasso upset. In my opinion, this is the best women's MMA fight of the entire year. I know people are going to say the Aldana fight on the prelims of UFC 296 is up there, and it is. But in terms of, like, sheer magnitude of the moment, the Grasso upset is the best women's fight of the entire year. So, earns a point there. Jeff Neal versus Savkat Rachmanov is the feature fight. Amazing. And then we have Gamrat versus Jalen Turner. I'm a DACA point. 
But then the main card opener is Bo Nickel. This is probably one of the best main cards of the entire year. And I know I said I wasn't going to bring up the prelims, but just so you guys get a reference of how good this card was when it came out. Ian Gary is on the early prelims. I understand we clown Ian Gary now, and deservedly so. He's he's a fun fighter to watch. You can't even deny that. But I do dock a point on Jalen Turner and Mateus Gamrot. So it's it's going to be a 9 out of a 10. Still an A tier, though. Like, this is our first A tier of the entire video. Next up is UFC 286. Let me refresh just to see what it is. Leon Edwards versus Kamaru Usman, three, the ending of the trilogy. And the co-main event is Justin Gaethje versus Rafael Zeev. That, that, that's, a, that's a decent card. However, Justin Gaethje sold the card. And I do, like, later in the video, you're going to see why. I do dock a point if the co-main is the, the real selling point of the card. Because at the end of the day, let's be real here, I don't care if it's for a title or not, the main event has to be the selling point because that's what you're giving to me. Justin Gaethje versus Rafael Fazeev, that was the best fight on the entire card, and that was the reason that most people bought it. I know Leon, I, I know Leon brought the storyline. Leon Edwards Kamaru Usman is, again, a great fight. At the end of the day, the biggest thing that it did is it ended the trilogy... Not, I wouldn't say forgettable, but it's not It's not going to be an A tier. And I believe I made it a C tier purely because it was, it was kind of a meh card. Like, I could take it or leave it with paying $80 for this. And for anybody wondering why I didn't bring up any other fights on the main card, um, Gunnar Nelson versus Brian Barbarena, Jennifer Maya versus Casey O'Neill, and Marvin Vittoria versus Roman Delizze. Not, not a great main card. I'm sorry. Justin Gaethje hard carries this card. And for that reason, I mean, yeah, you're a C tier. No, I don't even know why I have to justify that. Next up is UFC 287. Alex Pereira versus Adesanya 2. The main event carries. It does. It does. And as it should be, so I'm not going to dock a point on there. Now, the co-main, co-main's not that bad either. It's Gilbert Burns versus George Masvidal. Wits was his retirement fight. Let me remember. I know this one was on the line when I drew up this tier list. And i trying to remember my justification. It's C tier, by the way. I'm trying to remember how I justified it. Oh, yeah. Rosas Jr. is on the main card. Bo Nickel is pussing it. Rosas Jr., that, that's just crazy. And this was the fight that he got exposed on. And Kevin Holland versus Ponzinibbio. I mean, like, that, that was a great fight. So, C tier, got a dock a point for Rosas Jr. It just wasn't a good performance, wasn't a great fight. What are you going to do? Next up is UFC 288, and that's going to be... Oh, no wonder I forgot it. It's Aljamain Sterling versus Henry Cejudo for his comeback fight. Shit. You see, when I told you that I rated this on a cr criteria of how, it, how satisfied I am for paying for this card, understand that... I felt robbed of both my money and my time. This was a terrible card. Let me tell you the main card for this fight. And, and like, bear with me. Aljamain Sterling, Henry Cejudo. Meh is meh fight I have ever seen. Aljamain Sterling, you won via split decision to a returning Henry Cejudo. I, this is when the UFC wanted to get rid of you. Bala Mohammed versus Gilp. Oh my god, I remember this fight. This fight was shit. Yeah, no. Do you understand why I hate this card so much? This was the biggest disappointment of the year. I don't care what anyone else is going to say. Andras versus um, Yzian. <clears throat> YZ I can't fucking pronounce that name. Here's a picture. I'm sorry. Not a bad card. Not, that's not a bad women's fight. A Mobstar Evilev versus Diego Lopez. Unanimous decision. Undefeated. 17-0. Can't get a finish in the UFC. What's going on? What's going on? I know you're fighting Arnold Allen. Get a finish, please, and then we can get you to a title shot. Oh, in the main card opener. Crone Gracie versus Charles Jourdain. 
Thank you, Charles Jourdain, for getting that disgrace of jujitsu off my screen. How in the... I, I need to catch myself before I get let straight demonetized. How can you pull guard as the comeback Gracie? Okay, like this is why jujitsu gets laughed at. Your ancestors revolutionized Brazilian jujitsu. That's why it's called Brazilian jujitsu. And you come in here and you pull guard. I never want to see you back again. E tier, I don't think, I put a 3 out of 10. I'm taking that down to a 2. I am so mad about that card. We lose a point because of Bilal Muhammad. I'm just going to let that be said. UFC 289, oh my gosh. It's not, it, it doesn't get much better. UFC 289, Amanda Nunes versus Aldana. I'm glad Amanda Nunes beat the dog back into you and you had that great performance at the end of the year. It's, a, it's, it's an Amanda Nunes fight. Like, I, I love Amanda Nunes. Amanda Nunes displays what is wrong with women's MMA. He sees the best example of what's wrong with it. There's the champions, and then there's literally everybody else. Everybody else isn't even close to the championship level. You can be undefeated your entire career, fight for the belt, and then look like shit. And that's what happened in this Aldana fight. I mean, like, at least it was at women's bantamweight. And not that disgrace of a division featherweight. So at least, it's not, it's still bad. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even going to justify it. Charles Oliveira versus Benil Darius carried the entire event. The only reason that you can justify p paying the full price for this, and I guarantee most people didn't, is you love Charles Oliveira so much you're willing to pay that steep pay-per-view price. I, I think this was when they raised the price, which is tragic. Mike Mallett. Okay, Dan Ige. Dan Ige was the headliner of a fight night coming off a win. Bro, the rest of this card shit. The prelims are better than the main card outside of the Charles Oliveira. And Charles Oliveira wasn't even supposed to fight on this card. They really were going to sell us this card and put Imavov and Chris Curtis as the feature fight and say, please take $75. No, this fight... Uh, terrible. The only reason... That this fight isn't an E tier with UFC 288 is because I don't even know. Charles Oliveira carries it to a D tier. You can disagree with me in the comment section. I'm still mad about that. UFC 290 Volkanovski Rodriguez. Most underrated card of the entire year. Let me tell you from the opener to the main event what, what we were blessed with. Bo Nickel versus Woodburn. Actually, that, that's a terrible starter. Let, let me begin again. Jalen Turner versus Dan Hooker. The fight that Hooker got that dog back in him. Yep, that, that was on this card. Drickus Duplessis versus Robert Whitaker. I'm still salty too that Robert Whitaker lost. Doesn't change the fact that it was a crazy moment. Drickus looked good and I'm happy for it. Brennan Moreno versus Pantoja. Fight of the year is the co-main. And that didn't even sell the card, but oh, I'm so happy I did. Volkanovski versus Rodriguez. People are disappointed in this because they thought Yair would do better. All I got to say to you is who do you think we're talking about? This is Volkanovski, the king of featherweight. I know that sounds like a glaze, but th that's just facts, brother. And I know, again, that I wasn't going to bring up prelims. Prelims are insane, dude. Th this is another good one. Now, let's get back to... Oh, let me give you a tier list. That's an A tier. It's not, it's not even a question. It, it's an A tier, obviously. UFC 290 is the only other A tier on this list, I do believe. UFC 291. Dustin Poirier versus Justin Gaethje. One of my biggest gripes with this entire card is that the reason that they even put the BMF title up for grabs is they couldn't get a champion to headline the event. So I guarantee they called in some favors with Jorge Masvidal to put up the BMF belt. And understand that's why the BMF belt was put up to begin with, is they didn't have a champion to headline an event. And I'm ranting right now, so let's get back to it. But that's the reason. But it was a pretty good card. It was a pretty good card. Saying all of that, that sounds like a lot of negatives, but it's it was a pretty good card. Michael Chiesa versus Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland darsed Michael Chiesa. 
most inconsistent grappler in the entirety of the UFC, Michael Chiesa. Tony Ferguson fought Bobby Green. Made me cry to myself to sleep, but uh, Bobby Green gets it done via arm triangle. Derek Lewis. Oh, and this was the Masvidal Derek Lewis flying knee. Yep. You earn a point because of that. Alex Pereira, Jan Blachowicz, and the main event is the BMF title fight. B tier. B tier. I'm, I'm, think, I'm thinking a solid B tier for that one. All right, next up we have UFC 292, Aljamain Sterling, Son O'Malley. Okay, th I think this is where one of my controversial opinion comes in. Oh, nope, that's the next fight. We'll get to that. <sighs> Aljamain Sterling and Son O'Malley carried the entire card. Again, this is one of those where if Aljamain just dominated O'Malley, people would be very disappointed and actually say that this is one of the most disappointing cards of the entire year. You also had Ian Gary bully Neil Magny. Yeah, like that that's when this happened. Oh, and Wei Lee just beat beat the shit out of Lemos. Like 49 45 is one of the judges. That's hilarious. 50 43. Oh, this was the beating. Yeah, barely a fight. Uh, you got to see Zhang Wei Li move a, um, punch a moving punching bag for five rounds. Not don't not getting a finish, but I do like Wei Li, so I'm not gonna be too hard. And Vera versus Munoz. It's 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 okay, I guess. It's a B tier. It's a B tier. Like I'm not disappointed in the money that I spent purely because O'Malley won the title, and that's what carry <clears throat> that's what carries this entire event, in my opinion. So yeah. B tier. Now this is where my controversial opinion comes in. Adesanya vs. Strickland, UFC 293. The main event is one of the most memorable moments of the of this entire year. But outside of that, this card was complete and utter dog shit. Oh my lord. What a terrible card. Understand that this card was so bad that they let Strickland fight for the title. Because, um, let me tell you the main card real quick. Um, Tyson Pedro versus, I, I don't even remember his name, Turka G. Justin Taffa versus Lane. Manel Cap versus Dos Santos. And Tai Tuivasa versus Volkov. Really? A fight night main event is the co-main. What, what a weak card. I could, if this was Jared Cannonier instead of Star, um, Son Strickland, this would actually be the worst card of the entire year. This might beat out Cejudo versus Sterling for the worst card of the entire year. That's how bad the entire card was outside of the main event. It's C tier because Str Strickland literally carries this entire card from an E tier to a C tier. That's how bad this card is outside of, obviously, the main event. Next up is UFC 294. Okay. Okay. This is going to sound like a coat, but l let me let me explain myself. Biggest letdown of the entire year. This should have been the best card of the entire year. We had Saeed Nurmagomedov versus Gu... Some of these names, oh man. Gufarov. Okay. Alisco Ikram Aliskarov versus Alves. Johnny Walker versus Magomed Ankalaev. Hamzat Shamayev, Kamaru Usman. And again, the rematch between Makachev um, and Volkanovski. On paper, that this is the best card of the entire year outside of maybe the Jones Gone card. This should have been it. But the referees and the, some of the weird stuff that was happening in fights, the Johnny Walker Magomed on Kaliyev incident, this card fumbled its way from an easy A tier all the way down to a B tier. Like, don't get me wrong. Mak Makachev winning Volk against Volkanovski, that's an impressive performance, but the asterisk attached to it is Volkanovski came up on 10 days notice. If it was Gamrat, this card would be a C tier. Volkanovski saves this card from C tierium and moves it to B tier. Hamzat Shamaya versus Kamaru Usman literally carries the entire main event, and the performance was so meh. This was supposed to be a number one contender's match, and now Hamza has to fight somebody else. B tier, decent, not great. Next up, oh, I lied earlier. There is one more A tier on this list, and I think you guys know what it is. UFC 295, Prohaska versus Pereira. 
A tier. Amazing card. This would have been the best card of the year if Jones was on it and Pereira versus Prohaska was the co-main. Amazing card. Sergei Pavlovich versus Tom Aspinall. Interim belt. One of the best co-mains of the entire year, easily. Jennifer Andras versus Mackenzie Dern. I'm going to take that back. Not, not a great performance for Mackenzie Dern. She kind of got fraud checked here. And, I mean, what are you going to do, man? It, it just happens. Bonois St. Denis socks the world and beats the shit out of Fro Matt Fravola. Another point gets added. And then we got Diego Lopez winning by KO in the first round. <clears throat> Bro. This is a great card, man. 9 out of 10. A tier. If Mackenzie Dern did better, this would have been a 10 out of 10. And maybe that fumbles its S tier ranking. S tier comes at the very end. So if you guys are surprised that there's no S tier yet, I'll do I'll do the unveiling at the end. And now, UFC 296. Disappointing. Honestly, I... This is what, I was talking with some of my buddies about it, and it was, why is this card considered a bomb? I don't, I wouldn't say it's a bomb. I think we put so much investment and interest into the main event of Colby Covington versus Leon Edwards, but at the end of the day, it's a ring-rusted wrestler against a striker that can keep it distance. It's, it's a very disappointing main event, and Colby, Colby didn't come to play, and Leon did just enough to win. You can't. He's the champion, man. Like, he doesn't have to prove a point every single time he's fighting. And that's the champion that I think we're going to get in Leon Edwards. He's going to do just enough to win, not more. And I mean, like, listen, it is what it is. The co-main event was Alessandre Pantoja. I, actually, I don't have to go through this, but most of you guys probably remember this. Best fight of the uh, entire main card is most definitely Sopkot Rachmanov versus Wonderboy. Both looked good. Sopkot was injured, still gets a submission, submits Wonderboy for the first time in his entire career. Oh, and um, Joss Emmett knocked Bryce Missile, um, you know, to epilepsy. And the prelims were pretty good, but I can't count that. Now, what do I rank S tier now that I've gone through every single card? Put what your S tier is in the comment section below. But without further ado, it really is kind of easy. UFC 285 is the best card of the entire year. It's one step above 290 and 295, but it's just that tiny bit better S tier. What a great year for UFC cards. We have a lot of B tiers, and at the end of the day, most some of the C tiers would be considered A tiers in other years. The worst card of the year, to absolutely nobody's surprise, is UFC 288. What a... I, I'm, I call it a robbery, not because I believe Suhuda won, but I was literally robbed of my money. Like, there's just no other way to say it. That's the worst card of the year. Tell me what you think the best card of the year was in the comment section below. Do you like my tier list? And if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Adios, guys.